It is the earthquaking, pillar shaking, podcast listening, leader of the Meat Pop Express, Big Trouble, Ben Bishop. And get ready to get ready, folks, because you are tuned in to the fastest growing professional wrestling podcast in the world, the Three Count Podcast. Drag ball Welcome now everybody to another the great ring. edition of the Man. Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering the Ring. I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller. That's right, the man that leads you up this mountain called wrestling. You could call me your Sherpa. You better call me your Sherpa. But like every good Sherpa, you got to have someone who's been there, done that, and can do it more efficiently than you can. And that's why it's never about me, but about who's entering the ring. And today... Our man comes to us from MFPW, Outbreak, Funhouse, ACW, Titan, New England, and the school of Ricky Morton. He is Westfield Kelly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thanks for that introduction, man. I appreciate it. Hell yeah, man. You know, I was so hyped because I know we talked uh, at the Outbreak taping, but then we even talked prior, previous to that. And then I was glad that we like reconnected because I was like, Yo, let's get this locked down because I definitely uh want to bring my man's on. <laughs> let's get it done. Let's get it done. <laughs> oh man, so you know, we were we we're we we're talking a lot and everybody the fun thing is right, like everybody knows that we talk like before the podcast and after the podcast, like just it just happens, right? But we were getting into some interesting stuff and I wanted to kind of rehash it back up, right? So you found out that like I trained in Baltimore and I'm yeah. friends with Chaz and Prince and uh Noah. So <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's like I was telling you, right? Like, it's no secret. There's, you know, usually two ways that you get into the into the sport, right? One, you'll go, yeah, like, sure. You'll go to the backyard, like you're not supposed to, or you'll actually get trained. Yards. <laughs> so yeah, and I was telling you, Chaz, Chaz, and I were uh, both yarders. We both worked at a couple different uh, uh, feds, quote unquote, organizations. Um, if you, <laughs> you know. Yeah, we had a lot of fun and we we actually ran like so funny thing was is uh Prince wasn't that way because Prince was like already like working shows. He was just there kind of like watching us and try to like coach people and like mentor them. But mm-hmm. yeah, Chaz and I we ran we ran a couple of matches together. I know um Noah and I ran a match together. I know Noah and Chaz have worked each other. But yeah, so one day I just told him I was like, I'm done, I'm done with this, I'm going to go pro. And I was like, I'm out. And they're like, okay. I was like, you need to come or you can stay here. And our friend, fun. yeah, our friend who introduced us was like, um, yeah, this is a jump off point. So you come here, you come hang out and you can go. And uh, one of the kids, I was going to tell you about this, right? So one of the kids like pulled me to the side and mind you, this, this is only like three, two years ago. So I'm like 33, 34 years old. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, you should hang around the backyard scene, like develop your character a lot more. And then, you know, just then you can go into like the pro scene with like a fully fledged character. And I was like, or I can go there now and continue growing my character like I would if I was in the backyard. And I was like, peace. I'm messing around with the back, the yarders and get hurt, man. That's what I always tell people. Like, you're messing around and get hurt and you won't be able to go pro and then. And off of what, right? 15 people in a backyard? Not even? Yeah. yeah I've seen like. a restaurant in front of two, three people. And I'm just like, oh, man, that's rough. <laughs> that's rough. But you know what? Like, there is one thing to say, though. Like, some of those kids that, like, were working in the back, they, they do it because they love it. And that's, that's genuinely why we do it in the pro, right, is that we do it because we love it. And I just encourage those guys. Every time I see them, I'm just like, come on, man. Just stop playing. Just go get – just – and because in Baltimore, like, or oh, in Maryland, you guys have a license. It's like, just start go get trained, get a license, and then start go making money. Like, you do it for fun. Why not do what you do for fun and get paid for doing it just because you're having fun? I was like, just makes sense. I don't do it so much for, like, the love of it. I do it so much for what it does for other people. So I do it more for the fans and how it can make them feel. But I never like, yeah, of course we have like tapings and stuff like that, but I don't think I can actually like wrestle without fans. Like that's what I do it for. I do it for the reaction and 
make them feel a certain way and hopefully change somebody else's life down the road. And that's the bigger goal for me. So. Oh, that's awesome though, man. And I, it's funny. Cause like for me, like I, and I'll, you know, we can swap these stories up. I do it cause I, I do it because like I've, I've been a wrestling fan since I was a kid and like, mm-hmm. I know how much of an influence that guys like Jake, the snake Roberts, macho man, Ray Mysterio, Dean Malenko, Chris Jericho, uh, Sean Undertaker, like all those guys had those influences on me. The Rock, John Cena, like all those guys mm-hmm. had an influence on me to want to be like that guy that's like, I, I am now like my character is like, it's me just cranked up to a hundred. So you can only imagine what it looks like when I'm in, whether I'm at a taping or I'm in front of fans, like I'm just super out there <laughs> regardless. Yeah, yeah, I've seen you wrestle. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I, my last match, Speaking about Macho Man, my last match, I actually did a, a elbow drop off the top rope into thumbtacks. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my first street fight. Oh, my God. I won't be doing that again anytime soon. You know what's first. funny, though, because I hear all the time, so you can, you can be the guy who tells us. Like, I hear, like, thumbtacks, they don't, you don't feel them when they go oh. in it's when they start pulling them out is when you're just like oh shit <laughs> you i felt them the moment i got on his shoulders i was like shit <laughs> like what did i sign up for puts me through them um yeah them taking it out does hurt but like when i got to the back my adrenaline was still high and they took them out right away i was kind of getting my ass chewed out a little bit over something i did earlier in the day so like my attention with tour is that someone's like yelling, yelling at me about something I did or didn't do, which is normally Danny Cage. And then you got Missy, which is Missy Sampson is great. And she really, her practices are great. She helped me find my swagger. So she's talking to me. She's critiquing me and telling me how proud she is. And then you have somebody else like getting the thumbtacks out. So they didn't really feel, they didn't really hurt taking them out. But the thing is like, I had a couple in my trunks. And when I got backstage, back to the locker room i took off my boots and stuff and i just grabbed my belt and i just sat in front of like the monitor in the back and when i went to go sit down i sat on a couple more but other than that that's that's when it hurt like they they get stuck in your trunks and the other day when we were out outbreak i was going through my bag and i pinched myself because i have some of them in my bag too like they just get everywhere dude they just get everywhere like i won't do it again anytime soon like, uh, to be honest with you, I only did it just to get the stripes, you know, just to get the experience. But I don't think I'll ever do Now that I'm saying it out loud, I'll probably never do it again. <laughs> Especially if like, I tell people all the time, I was like, listen, man, like, I'm I'm 30 plus years old. I look back, and I'm just like, it's it's not something that I'm just like, hey, yo, like, I've been through some places, and I'm not really trying to go visit that place. So yeah, like, right. <laughs> Yeah, they can keep the uh, the thumbtacks, the chair shots, the fluorescent light tubes. They can keep that shit. That's not why I signed up. So, yeah, I just like to to entertain and be a wild, rambunctious mercenary who just is over over the top with his puns and pop culture references. <laughs> I, you entertain me every time you get in a ring. I appreciate it. But yo, let me know about you, man. Who is Westfield Kelly? Oh, man. Uh, Westville Kelly is a 6'2", 230 problem that you can't fix. Um, <clears throat> I just I just try to be me, turn up to 11, the real me. Um, I just go out there and I perform to my highest ability. And I rip heads, take names. Sometimes you're going to take an ass with them, but that's okay. You keep coming back. I don't have the title for nothing, you know? <laughs> like keep going and going and going i have a match december 18th uh for a monster factories fallout um against brian morris for the championship and i fully plan on going in there breaking him in half and walking out the same way i walked in so that, that's, that's, okay. <laughs> that's like that's like the one thing that we could talk about too man because like monster factory is a place that like is just legendary man like you hear about the names that come out. You see the people who come working out of those places. Everybody that comes out, man, is always solid. That's going to be me. I'm going to be the next one. I promise you. Well, we have this one girl named uh, the Notorious Mimi. I'm sure you heard of her. She's from the Monster Factory. She got it. Keep it on the low. She got some big things coming her way. 
So you definitely, she was just on AEW twice. Like she got some things coming her way, but my time is coming as well. And I do believe in the next five years, I will be on a big stage myself, not just as somebody on stage, but someone of importance. You know. Oh yeah, and I feel like Monster Factory just like it's gonna sound wild, right? Because like with like Riddle, Priest, right? Obviously mm-hmm. Mimi, she's the one like just spearheading away through. Like yeah. you see, you can see, and you can name all the talent that comes out. I mean, Q T Marshalls, like you know, in that same as a coach. Yeah. You're just like, wow, man. Like, and the talent just keeps flooding out. And you're just like, wow. yeah, it makes you want to go there, doesn't it? Yeah. It makes you just want to get around it. And it's it's a great atmosphere there. And we have a lot of great wrestlers. But at the end of the day, this is a competition. So if I feel as though I'm the best, I should be able to express that. Yeah. I don't feel like I'm the best there. I won't, I won't say that, but I feel as though what I bring to the table. Is, is a good chunk of the table. So yeah, and it's it's cool too, man. Because actually, we have a friend of our show, friend of mine, uh, Quayshon Alexander, actually just started wrestling up there too. Started training, and uh, he yeah, was, uh, Q, uh, dude, <laughs> Q, yeah, we just had a practice match. Really? Yeah. So like, he's still getting like used to a couple things, and he's wrestling people that are like trying to be smooth with him. And I'm smooth about my moves, but I'm there to light your ass up. So, like, I said to him before I match, I was like, all right, we're going to do this, that, and the third. Soon the match starts, I'm going to walk over to you and smack the shit out of you. And he started laughing. I was like, ah, okay, you think it's a joke. <laughs> so, soon as the practice match, like, Primal Fear was there, too, from Ring of Honor. Yeah. Um, they were, like, critiquing our matches or whatever. Soon the match starts, let's just walk up to him and smack him as hard as I could. Like I backhand his shit, <laughs> but like, <laughs> like I didn't do. Like I'm not one of these other guys that are just gonna like just put you through a match. I'm gonna be a hundred with you every time I get in there. So whether we're on a show, whether we're in practice, you're gonna get the same me. So I want to let you know, like, is it, make sure you ask yourself: Is this a ride that you want to take? Because I'm gonna light your ass up every time, every chance I get, every move I get to you, I'm gonna light you up. And then I'm going to tell you to get up and get to the next spot. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. <laughs> and Q, Q is, what's funny is that Q, like, I met I met Q, which, this is like the craziest story, right? So I don't know if you know, but Q used to play football at the University of Nebraska, which is where I'm yeah. from. And so one of my friends, a high school friends, was like, hey, hit up, uh, hit up Q, ask him if he wants to be on your podcast. So I did. And he responded. He was like, yeah, I'll be on. So he's been a guest of our show. And then he started training with me and then like, then he, he obviously was moving up. So he went to, he moved, he got out of school, went back up to New Jersey and I see him every once in a while now. And, but I'm like always like talking about him because I'm like, he's this wild ball of energy that I'm just like, bro, like, I feel like you have so much like in the can, you have no yeah. idea what's about to explode. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited for matches. We're going to have down the line. I hope he, uh, brings it because I'm, I'm gonna... going to be I'll, i can't wait to be in those locker rooms i'm not even gonna front man <laughs> like it'll be the one time where i just come out of the back and just chill and just watch the whole entire match because i'll be like oh come bro we have a show the 18th um uh i'll send you the schedule after the podcast where we got our schedule for next year you gotta come to one of the shows maybe you can get on a pre-show or even on one of the regular shows hit up danny let him know that you want to come out send him some of your stuff and just bang it out you know yeah, no doubt um, Man, don't worry. I'm gonna I'm gonna put an outbreak too. I'm gonna be like, yeah, man, like I wanna I wanna work a match with Westfield. Like, just let me get in that ring. Yes, sir. Am, am I? Am I? I'm going over, right? Uh, no. <laughs> 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 like, is this a ride that you want to take? Uh, yeah, all of this. Money. That's what I want right now. <laughs> oh shit! And you going to? Uh. I, have a list, I have a list, homie, of like 30 names. Right. So, full transparency for those guys who are listening to us, like just in this conversation. I have a list as of 11.30 of 40 names that are on that list. You're on that list of people yeah. that are trying to work. And my trainer was just like, he looked at my list. He goes, you'll probably work about nine of those people. I'm like, I don't care. This is a list of people that I will fuck up. <laughs> like, <laughs> Let's get it. Let's get it. Bet. You saw when I hit uh, Hugo Bright with that European. Did you, you hear that shit down the street? Yeah love that shit i love it 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 
I love but it. I've only been in a ring with a couple of people that have hit me that hard, and I, and I love it. It's a give or take. It gets me into it. It gets me aggressive, very aggressive. Oh, Chaz and I have, like, this thing. Like, if you ever watch, like, us, like, work, if you yeah. ever see him, like, dog slap the shit out of me, it's because yeah. all he wants to do is just go, like, he wants to, he wants to go, like, more intense. Like, he's just like, turn it up. Get it. Like, turn it up. You're not, you're not ready. <laughs> like, <laughs> so that's why, like, at the last tapings, right, when it was a sing- the four-way single, like, I, it, Chaz, I'm sorry, okay? I didn't say that officially to him. But uh, yeah, I punched him right in this shit by accident. But it, I sold out for it. <laughs> we were forty seconds into the match, and he was like, lips busted open. He's like, "I'm gonna fuck you up." Yeah, I believe it. I believe. It. Have it. Have Have you had anybody take that vest off of you yet? I well, I mean, had it at the last taping. Yeah, they took it off a little bit. <laughs> ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the first time that's ever happened. I've had people like unzip it. And then, like, give me a chop and then, like, zip it back up as, like, a comedy spot. But, like, as far as, like, it actually being ripped like it was at uh-huh. that Sunday, nah, never happened. Uh-huh. But I was like, all right, bet. I was like, I, I, that vest is toast now. So, I was like, I'm glad I have a second one. <laughs> yeah, right? Jesus Christ. Yeah, and it was funny, too, because, like, when the, when the idea came for that spot, I was like, yo, this is going to be, that's, that's a great spot. And then when I went for it and I, and I went for the flip, like, I just felt everything just pull with it and i was like that's toast as soon as i hit the ground and i'll and to be fair i'll probably never wear that i'll fix that vest up and then like doctor it up before i ever get back into the ring with it because the what ended up happening and i didn't know this at the time and you we kind of alluded to it adrenaline's pumping dude like so i didn't realize there's like the pegs in the back and they were sticking in my skin so when i took the vest off like I could feel it pull, like pull my skin back. And I was like, all right, well, this is why I said I had a doctor stuff first. And the first couple matches I worked with it, I was like, oh, it's not that bad. Mm-hmm. No, it was definitely worse than I was expecting Jesus. it to be. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Oh, but yo, man. speaking of bumps and stuff like that, man, I got to know, like, what's one of the worst bumps you've taken? Ooh, I, uh, I have two. Worst bumps I ever took. So, you know, Shaheem Ali from Ring of Honor? Yeah. Yeah, so he came to the Monster Factory because Ring of Honor released him. And he was back for a couple of practices before he went to Atlanta to pursue his AEW dream. So he was with us for about, I want to say, three months, three, four months. And I was still, like, getting accustomed. I haven't found my swagger yet, and I haven't found my confidence in the ring yet. So he was like, oh, I'll work with your kid, this, that, and third. I thought I had confidence. I thought... I knew what I was doing, but he really, like, I wouldn't say he embarrassed me, but he would just show me, like, kid, you're not there yet. And to be honest with you, I feel like I'm there now, and I feel like I'm not there yet for the next level. Like, I feel like I'm at the level where I'm supposed to be where I'm at, and I feel like when I, I need to get in the ring with someone better now. So we're in there, and he does, uh, towards the end, he does this cutter, off this dive-off cutter off the second rope onto me. So he's so heavy. This is when he was like overweight. So because they now he's like real, real tone and slim now. Right. This is about like 40 pounds heavier. He comes off the rope, does this cutter completely like all his weight on my neck airs me out. Like my stomach is like, I feel like I can throw up at any second. (laughs) And he picks me up by my shirt and he's like next spot and throws me to the rope. And he does like a windmill ball slam. And lands like on me, like on me, takes the win at him and just pins me. And um, I was just uh, that that was probably like one of the worst bumps like I've ever took because like I was just so aired out. I wasn't ready for it. I couldn't even prepare for it. I just was in autopilot. And um, to be honest with you, like I might have blacked out like on my way into it. Like when he picked me up and threw me against the rope, like. Oh my God. I don't even know how, like I even got up for it, but yeah, that, that one hurt pretty bad. And then, uh, you know, master McBlaster from, um, uh, Shinkar, yep. he gets around. He was just on MLW too. Actually, he's like one of my closest friends and he takes me on his wing. He brings me to all his bookings and it's great not to be an extra and to be there under somebody else. Like when I was at MLW, I was happy not to be an extra that day because they were like, them extras were like, the way they were treating him, I wasn't a fan of it. And I just got treated a little bit differently because I knew him. 
which was great. <laughs> um, I, I just felt like I felt like a wrestler. And um, he we did the squash match. So I come I'm really comp. So at the Monster Factory, I'm, I won't say I'm one of the bigger names, but when I come out, like I'm bigger, like I, I wouldn't say I'm one of the bigger names, but I'm important. I would say that. All right, right. And um, it was supposed to come off. He's making his second debut, his second match or whatever. He's supposed to come off strong. So no one thinks he's going to squash me. So he squashes me. He picks me up for this choke slam. And this dude's like 6'5". And I completely post on his shoulder as far as I could, too. So we got up as high as we possibly could. And I would probably say I was about 15 feet in the air. And he just dunks me on my back. <laughs> and then puts his knee in my face and pins me. That was probably – that was a bad bump, too. That shit hurt. But praise God that I've never been hurt. But I don't want to take any more bumps like that. I do want to take a superplex. I think that's, like, next on my list because I haven't done it before. I want I wanted to get all my stripes and do things and get out of my comfort zone so at least I know for a fact when I get to the bigger stage, I know for a fact what I'm comfortable doing and not doing. Right. So. Yeah, I've taken a those superplex problems. before. Yeah, you have. Yeah, I've done that in a, in a Tower of Doom. Like I've I've done both those. Those are the, actually the crazy thing is is like, and I hear it. I've heard it before, and then hearing it again, and then experiencing it, it's crazy. But like those bumps, like they don't really hurt. They they hurt, but they don't hurt as bad as like if you're just normal. Yeah, it's just yeah. it's crazy. And they're like, yeah, the the higher you fall the the worse it hurts i'm like what that's that doesn't make any or the less it doesn't hurt and i'm like what that doesn't make any sense and no like it did like as soon as i went off the tower of doing i went over and i was just i was way up and i was like all right i'm just gonna ride this out and then yeah that's exactly what happened <laughs> and i'm afraid of heights too so yeah <laughs> that, that's i'm not a fan my friend i am not a fan let's just get these things out the way and then you get to the bigger stage we'll see no ladder matches for me. <laughs> Bet. Well, okay, so we're talking about the worst bumps, man. We can talk about the hardest hit. Who's hit you the hardest? Oh, my God. Uh, obviously, nobody, if I can't remember it. I mean, <laughs> I've been. <laughs> Did it happen? <laughs> I got knocked out in a practice match, but not because I was hit hard, <laughs> because I was tagged in the right spot. Mm. So I was wrestling Mimi. and um. Uh, notorious Mimi and uh I told her I was like yo I'm like I'm gonna treat you just like I treat everybody else I'm gonna smack the shit out of you and um she was like okay okay whatever and she has like that aggressive fight too but like for me I was just like all right she has it but I'm gonna bring it out I'm gonna bring it out of her just because I can so she's supposed to hit me with this insecure I already smacked her twice at this point so she's fired up and um she hits me once this insecure and she hits me like right on the back of my neck. Like she just hit me in a perfect spot. And um, I just woke up on the ground. I woke up while she was pinning me and I had to kick out of that too. So I remember the ref saying too, and I just kicked out. So good thing I had my reflexes kicked in. But yeah, I remember her coming up and I woke up on the ground. Like I've never been knocked out before. So that was like, I used to always be scared to get knocked out. But now that I know it happened so quick, like, I don't know. I guess I can take it again. I'm not as scared as I used to be, but that was the first time I've ever been knocked out. But I've never been, like, hit hard. No one has really, like, really lit me up. I mean, I hope someone does one day. Other than chops. Like, of course, if you chop somebody, you're going to light them up, whatever, whatever. But, like, to give somebody, like, a good forearm or get check, like, on the chin or whatever, and blow their shit up, I've never been hit like that. So, we'll see. Maybe one day. One day it's gonna happen to me. It's not an if; it's a when. I've been I've been knocked out because I got my head slammed in like concrete, and that was because a friend of mine got mad. I don't know why, and then just let's. You show that to a friend. <laughs> oh, you show that to a friend. Yeah, because then afterwards, like when I'm sitting there with an ice pack on my head, and he's just like, "Bro, I don't know what happened." I was like, "I don't know either," but you slammed me in the concrete. He's like, "I know I did. I'm so sorry." You want to go get ice cream? And, I was, and at this time, I'm like, tw I'm at 18. Like, yeah, I want to yeah. get ice cream. And so we just left and go get ice cream. Oh, I'm concussed. I'm getting ice cream. Yeah. And ice bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We paid for it. We paid for it. Like, I ended up paying for it later than he did. He paid for it the next day because we're on the wrestling team in college. And so 
he paid for it because like I'm injured. I can't wrestle because I'm concussed. And then he he had to pay for it. So he was doing burpees. And then the next like after I got cleared, like not that practice, but the next practice, I had to run and do burpees because they're like, well, if you're dumb and you guys are wrestling in the locker outside the like in the hallway. Yeah, I was yeah, of sitting. Yeah. You deserve yeah. to get your shit rocked. I was like, you're right. You're right. <laughs> oh, all right. One man, day, so- man. One day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, the, those flash knockouts are like the worst too because like people will talk to you and you're just like, I don't I don't know what happened. I just know like I, things went black and then things opened back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, all right, man. So after the shows that you're usually running at, I'm just curious. Do you have a post match meal, post match snack you got to get to? Uh sushi, man. I always get sushi after my match. Yeah, I always get shrimp tempura, take out the cucumber, and replace it with crab meat. Okay, that's my go-to, friend. <laughs> I even like bring it to the show sometimes. Oh, where? Yeah, me. I I'm not gonna lie, man. Like after I get doing the match, and and it's funny because I've been doing this recently, but before a match and after a match, man, I'm always popping gummy bears. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. You offered me. Some. I don't eat anything that sticks to my teeth, so I'm not a big like. I don't like licorice, anything chewy. But I appreciate you offering. <laughs> well, the funny thing about gummy bears is that like it has like um it has like a lot of good sugars for you. So like yeah, if you want that instant kick, like you know, yeah, snack, yeah, for snack, sure. You know, it's not like saying don't eat a whole fucking bag, but if you ate like nine, you know, like mm-hmm. a handful, like the serving size that they tell you to eat. Yeah, you'll get a good kick out of it, and then you're ready to go. And then when you're tired, you just pop in some more gummy bears, and you're good to go again. So. Oh, good stuff. <laughs> but uh, all right, man. So get some good you – know, and I, I'm always down for some sushi too, by the way. So one of these days, man, we're going to have to stop over. I don't know if I don't know if there's any places outside of Outback. Yeah, it is. Up there, yeah. We might have to do it, like, after one of the live shows in Hamburg. Yeah. yeah. Definitely have to go grab some sushi. After I beat the I shit out of there. Dude, like I, I was living in Hawaii because I was with the military and I used to go get all the ahi poke I could get. And I just used to love seeing there just eating just raw fish just out of this bowl. Delicious. Delicious. <laughs> so let's get into it, man. I'm just curious. Like, what's been one of the hardest lessons you've had to learn? Oh, <laughs> I'm still learning it, actually. Um, <clears throat> patience. And understanding that, like, not everything is about you. Mm. And everything's, nothing that, like, comes to you is something you can plan for. You can be ready for something, but you can never plan for something in this wrestling world. But something's always going to pop out, right? Um, I've been in situations where I've been in a ring with people that don't want to follow the, the, my instructions. They want to do what they want to do, and we're almost getting to a real fight. Um, I've been in situations where I'm told I'm going to lose. And they tell me I'm going to win sooner the match start. The referee comes over to me and like, oh, you're actually going over tonight. Like just little tests and little things like that and understanding when to like not crack a joke and not make everything about you. And just typically don't speak unless you're spoken to. But at the same time, show off your personality because like that's what's going to attract people. So just finding that balance of like, all right. Just keeping my mouth shut, keeping a straight face for everything, but still being me. That's the hardest thing. Like, I think it's so hard because I'm such like, I won't say an outgoing person, but I'm just so me. Like, I can't just switch it on and off. But in this world, you have to. And another thing is like, I can never be fake. Like, I can never pretend to do something that I don't want to do. And that's like my biggest problem. Because like, if I don't fuck with you, I'm not going to act like I do. If I don't fuck with the situation, I'm not going to act like I do. So you just gotta gotta pretend. It's a lot of pretending in this business. I gotta work on it. There, if there I go around somebody that's not gonna accept it, or accept, <laughs> or accept my just the way I go about things, and then I'm gonna be fucked. So yeah, well, I mean, at the end of the day, though, man, like if you keep things lighthearted and you just keep moving in your direction, it's it's weird how people will just kind of gravitate to you. the right people. I don't want to say the right people because it's fucked up, but the right people will gravitate like around you and you'll start seeing like those people like will. Repeat so I do them. have those guys. So shout out to my guys, Brian Morris 
Uh, my man, Brian Morris, he's one of the hardest workers that I know. This man drives two hours to practice every day and busts his ass day in and day out. And we have a match coming up December 18th, 18th. And I know he's going to bring it just as much as I am. He's one of the hardest workers in every room he works in. Then I got my boy, Chris Rocky. Chris Rocky comes in, well, Kristen Rocco, but I call him Rocky. And this kid, he knows everything you can possibly know about wrestling. And even some days, though, he might not get it. And some days he might mess up. He always shows up and puts in his right foot for it and busts his ass. And then my last one is Jordan. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I think it's Keller. Jordan Keller, but I just call him Joe, 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 Jordan. And uh, Jordan, he's moved out of here from Wisconsin all the way up here, not knowing anybody, just to chase his dream at the Monster Factory. And we travel everywhere together. And this kid, he's all about being in the right spot at the right time. And he always puts his right foot forward and busts his ass day in and day out. And those are guys that I love to be around and they work so hard. And I believe in the next five to 10 years, we'll all be in our respectful companies. And uh, we're going to run this shit. And I truly believe that. So those are my guys. And I love them to death. That's well, I mean, like, and I mean, you've already seen, like, for, for me, like, I just yeah, seen them. Yeah. I those guys, them. those guys bust their ass. <laughs> you know, we just know all we know is pedal to the metal and just run. Like, and that's all we, that's all we want to do and just have so much fun doing whatever we're doing. Dude, if we crash our car, we crash our car, man. But we're just going to go balls exactly. out. <laughs> but uh sorry man like you know you're training at the monster factory i'm sure you've had a few people come and ask you and i'm just curious what kind of advice would you give to up-and-coming wrestlers oh man i just got this question yesterday some of the newer guys that are thinking about signing up it's weird i always get like hit up about it some guys that want to wrestle or are planning to wrestle hit me up i guess because like i'm starting to take more of like a leadership role in the monster factory and i'm kind of getting more of my shine or whatever getting more of my push which is great but i do want to give back and help the next person out i think what i say to everybody is just like dude just keep showing up i mean i know that's so plain but like you never know like what opportunity presents itself there's going to be days where you're not going to be treated like a person and it's going to be so annoying and there's days you're going to show up and you probably have the worst day ever just to get there and think oh like i'm escaped from my real life and come to wrestling and like it's going to be great tonight at practice and you get there and we're not doing anything and it's like fuck i wasted my time but dude just keep keep showing up keep showing up and keep putting in the work and something's going to come out of it maybe not exactly what you want it to be but like you have to understand something's better than nothing so something's going to come out of it just keep yeah. showing up i like that man because like i know like uh like recently like my trainer has like entrusted me to start training like some of the new guys on how to do like proper back bumps and face bumps and flip bumps and stuff like that so he has me like open up doing the practice sessions with them and I'm like yo that's cool and I appreciate that it's like now I'm starting to look at it like if I'm doing it here I just need to go to another school that trains a little bit harder than I do because I don't I've always I've always had this mentality of being like a small fish in a in a big pond and I like that idea. And so like, once I start to feel like I'm growing a little bit more, I'm like, all right, man, let's go, let's go jump in this place. Cause I've never, to be fair and full transparency for people who are out there living in Maryland, this is like the second longest place I've ever lived. And I've been here for like six years and I'm, huh? I'm turning 36, bro. Like turning, <laughs> turn 37. All right. It tells you something. <laughs> I don't know. I've never really guessed you're 37, man. I never would have yeah. guessed. <laughs> My attitude. Yeah. People tell me all the time, they're like, no way you act like you're like in your 20s it's like i know but then the next morning my body feels like it's in its 50s so I'm like, yeah <laughs> i'm only 22 years of age yeah so. i was like you know and that's the thing i noticed about you too i was like you have such a unique perspective on everything so it makes you seem like you're a lot older because i really thought you're like late 20s like 26 27 kind of in that yeah. era yeah. so to hear like i'm like yeah you definitely have like you have that that old soul mentality which is kind of cool so i definitely can vibe with that Trying to do this the right way, my friend. <laughs> I hear that. So speaking of doing things the right way, I need to know, man, because you've been in a lot of different locker rooms. Like you said, you're at MLW. You've also had, you know, School of Ricky Morton. I need one do and one don't of the locker room. Uh, one do. Always introduce yourself to everyone. Handshake. 
always extend your hand. Like, that's the biggest thing. Always make sure that you're respectful because, like, that's just the old school rule. You walk into a locker room, you don't say hey to anybody automatically because this is a business about politics, right? This business is all politics, right? We can get any big guy to be to do this or do that. Well, they might not have the same uh, charisma that you might have, but, like, at the end of the day, promotions are going to force whatever they want to force onto the fans. That's just Unfortunately, that's just how shit goes. So always be in good graces of everyone. Um, a big don't, <laughs> I would say, is um, uh, invading people's space, especially in the locker room. Know where you know who you are and know like where you stand. Like don't walk into a locker room and take a locker or just sit somewhere that's like convenient, especially if you haven't been there before. Like dude, don't you think someone else takes that spot on a regular? Like, go sit your ass in the back. Always go to the back unless you're invited to be in the front. That's one thing I've learned. <laughs> I've seen people do it. I've seen people come into the locker room and put their stuff in a good spot, and I'm like, that is not going to turn out well, but I'm not going to tell them. I'm going to let them figure it out themselves. <laughs> and it always comes back around like, hey, whose stuff is this? Yeah, bro, no, nah, take your stuff in the back, bro. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. Just don't do it again. See, then you try to be apologetic. And then now they don't care. Now they're trying to play you in front of everybody. Just go to the back every time. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good rule of thumb too, man. It's like, I don't think I've heard that one here yet. So I've definitely, it's definitely. Keep that in mind. Yeah. Mind. Cause it's funny for me. Cause like, I know like, um, there's been a couple shows where like, I, I, I brought my gear, right. And then my gears in the back. And then, like, for some reason, like, everybody feels feels back to front. And I guess, like, all the rooks are in the front. And I don't know why. But Well, you can ask, too. Be like, oh, it's cool I sit here. That's what I do when I go to places I don't know. Yo, it's cool I sit here. Does anybody sit here? All right, cool, cool, cool. I'm going to take this. All right, nice to meet you. I'm Wes. And it's just that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it happened with me. I was at, a, I was at a, a, an event for ACW in Baltimore. And mm -hmm. uh, I, had my stuff, I had my stuff, like, in the back. But it was, like... I didn't know if I was going to be on the show or not. I just know, like, I was asked to bring my stuff and, like, just throw it in the back, right? That's what I did. So I threw it in the back. After the show was over, right, obviously I'm not on the show. So I walked to the back to get my stuff, you know, and that's, I'm there. I, I know everybody, so I was introduced myself and then telling everybody, you know, hey, like, great job, you know, great match, this, that, and the other. Walked to the back and go grab my stuff. And this guy's like, is this your gear? I was like, yeah. He's like, do you need to grab it? I was like, can I grab it, please? And he was just like, sure. And then, like, as I go to grab it, then he just had, like, then in front of a person, he just, like, pops, like, like the little attitude kind of thing at me. And I was just, like, I just grabbed myself and just kept walking out. I was, like, bro, if I come back and we find out that I have heat with you, I was, like. See, that's exactly how it goes. Yeah. I was, like, bitch, you yeah, watch yeah. me in front of another guy, legit ask you if I could just grab my stuff really quick. And I was not, like, trying to interrupt your conversation. But. Some people just want to feel more important than who they are. Yeah. That's that's cool. But well, Batman, that is like all like the heavy hitting questions, but we got to get into the second best segment of the three count podcast. Okay. People ask me, what's the first? I tell them all the time. It's the Red Dogs Power Rankings that you can find on our Sunday shows live because it happens and it's always fun. But this is the three count podcast, 10 count questions. Mr. Westfield, this is how it works. I want to fire okay. off 10 questions at you rapid fast. Whatever okay. your answer, that's your answer. Okay. All right. All right. So we're going to add on the imaginary timer for added pressure. Bing. And here right. we go. Smackdown or Raw? Uh, Raw. Favorite movie? Goodfellas. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> PlayStation or Xbox? Uh, uh, Xbox. Favorite color? Pink. Trunks or tights? Trunks. Favorite submission move? Boston Crab. <laughs> That's a great one. Right? <laughs> All right, man. LeBron or Kobe? LeBron. <laughs> yeah. Favorite podcast? Uh, has to be the Chris Van Vliet show. I have a funny story about that, actually. But we keep going. No, go ahead. Let's hear All right, it. so I used to watch Cram... Chris Van Vliet all the time. And um, I went to Outbreak in Hamburg, and he was there. And 
funny thing is he came up to me and he's like talking or whatever, whatever. I guess he's just talking to anybody there. And he just figured I was one of the wrestlers. And then um, I was telling him about how I'm a big fan, this, that, and the third. And then later on, intermission comes and I come up to him. I was like, oh, can I get a picture? And he was like, yeah, man, it's $15 for a picture. I was like, what? <laughs> All right, bet. So I paid him the $15 and I took the picture. And I told him, I was like, when you interview me in the next couple of years, you're going to pay me $15 for that interview. <laughs> That's so funny, man. It's going to have, I'm going to get that $15 back. It's funny, though, because like I'm friends with a lot of friends that he's friends with. It's, that makes sense. Small like, world. Yeah. yeah. And I, I've talked to him a couple of times and uh, yeah, I've, I've asked him numerous times to be on this show and he's just like, he just hasn't said anything back. I'm like, all right, Chris, I know you're a busy dude, but don't yeah, worry. One day, <laughs> one day. And I asked, I told him too, I was like, yo, I remember I told him, I was like, uh, have you, do you interview like independent wrestlers? And he was like, well, I feel like I did, I, you know, cause Anthony Green got his jump off of his show. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, bet. So then I sent him a message. And I was just like, you want to, you know, can I get on your show? He's like, well, when you get around the Indies, let me know. And then we'll come find you. And I was like, bet. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm good at cold world, it. man. It's you're a cold world. <laughs> I was like, you're going to do it regardless. So I don't worry about it. But yeah, I'm a huge fan of Insight and uh, or the CBV <laughs> show, however you know it. But yes. Yeah. So nominate one person that you want to see on this show. Uh, I would say Brian Morris. All That's right. We definitely have to bring that up. <laughs> and then last but not least, my favorite question to ask every single person that comes on this podcast, favorite curse word. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I say during my matches, after I take a hard hit or a hard bump, shit. I'm up to the next one. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I feel that. <laughs> that and it, I feel like bump and feed hurts more than any other bump. Oh, my God. Yeah. I don't know why. If you can only remember, like, you got to remember, it's, we're in such a unique position where, like, we have to learn, like, what three moves are coming after you hit the ground. Like, it's, <laughs> it's always weird. <laughs> get up. Remember it. Yeah. Fall down. Get back up. Remember it. Okay. All right, buddy. I was telling, you know, people don't believe me, man. I was telling people, I was like, taking a bump is equivalent to being in a 30 mile an hour car crash. I was like, that's what they say. But like, I don't know, some rings I've been in are really soft. So I, don't, I can't imagine a car crash. <laughs> some rings are really nice. So I don't know how much I believe of that, but some rings are really nice. Right. All right, man. Well, those are all the questions that we do have for you. So the only thing that's left is simple. Just let our listeners and our viewers know where they can find you. Uh, you can find me at uh, Monster Factory, the, uh, the Monster Factory YouTube channel. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Westfield. The L is a one. Um, and that's it. That's all really my social media. Uh, definitely check out Monster Factory Fallout at December 18th. And see me retain my title. Bet. And there you have it. So you know what that means. We, we got to take this home. All right. This is what we do. But this yeah. is the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering the Ring. And like I said, I am your host. Clifford Red Dog Miller, the man that leads you up this mountain called wrestling. You could call me your Sherpa, but like every good Sherpa, you got to have someone who's been there, done that, and can do it more efficiently than you can. And that's why it's never about me. It's about who's entering the ring. And who's entering the ring today? Well, you see the man right next to me is Westfield Kelly. You don't know, now you know. And that means that you know what to do. Tune into the next episode and be there or... You just wait for this episode to end. You wait for that outro and you choose another episode to listen to. Peace. What's going on, Three Count Nation? I'm Clifford Red Dog Miller with the catchphrase. But what I really want to do right now, go to twitter.com, right? Go over there, find us at the Three Count underscore pod. Give us a follow, give us a like, give us a comment. We want to talk to you guys. Go to IG at the Three Count Pod. Give us a like. Give us a follow. Leave us a comment. We want to interact with you. Go to YouTube.com. Give subscribe. Turn the bell on. Turn on notifications. Leave a comment. We want to talk to you. Go to Anger.fm forward slash the Three Count Podcast. And in there, you can leave us a message and we will talk to you. Basically, what I'm trying to tell you is that we want to talk to you. We want to have fun with you guys and we love 
listening to what you guys have to say. Also, one thing I need you to do for me, the Three Count Podcast also has merchandise. At ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash the three count pod. Please go buy our t-shirts. We love you guys and we hope you love us too. So show us some support, please.